Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the secure soldering iron. You've probably seen this around and I appreciate the fact that it's in blue. Uh, but this has made its round, so I want to kick this video up a notch uh, by talking not only about the soldering iron a little bit, but I would like for you to put your favorite tool, the tool that you think everyone needs to have, down in the video description. Maybe it's one I need to pick up as well. I've gone through a number of tools over the last five years, and the soldering iron might be the most important, whether you buy bind and flies or you're going to take on your first build. I think the one thing in this hobby we get at least most in touch with is our soldering iron. I started out on like a $15 soldering iron that I just happened to have, you know, through home remodels or whatever. I just happened to have that. And it worked fine for quite a long time. Uh, and then I got a TS-100, which is this one here, which is hard to discern between the two because kind of they are the same but what the secure has done is driven down the price i also had the ts80 which has an interesting feature of a detachable uh, end but as you can see there hopefully yeah over time it didn't work out so great for me the uh end is kind of busted loose there so something to be careful about if you see a soldering tip this size probably should go back to something this size. Also, the Secure can run some custom firmware, which is really cool. You plug it into the USB port. It just appears like a USB drive, and you can install the custom firmware. It's called Realm, R-A-L-I-M. I'll link that down in the video description below. Brings in all sorts of features. I'm not gonna go into them. Uh, it's been done very well by UAV Tech. He did a great video, so I'll link his video down in the video description. I would highly encourage you to take it on. It has some at least fun features that uh, you can customize this quite a bit. Well, one of the things that's probably most popular about this is you can power it off various sources. You can you can buy a wall adapter, or you can use the DC adapter off a LiPo, or you can use a battery bank and plug it in and power it off of that, so it's very field-friendly. One of the things for me, it's really important is that it's small. I don't have a lot of space. You know, everything's kind of in arm's reach here. And that when I'm ready to solder, because I might only have 15 minutes, I need it to get ready quick. And that's my favorite feature. Plug it in, whoop, it gets ready to solder to 380 degrees real quick for me. Let's take a look at that first. Got the SQ001, like a spy agent here. And I've got my wall plug. I'm gonna plug it in. We're gonna watch it boot up. And then, ooh, come on, keep going. There you go. Now she's really taken off. Didn't take but a couple of moments. I just love this feature because I can't sit down. I don't have an hour to build. I don't have 40 minutes all the time. Sometimes I only get 10, 15 minutes at a time. Boom, there we go. Already 380 degrees. And if you leave it still, it'll go to a standby temperature. You can set that in this firmware by just plugging it in. Uh, by default, it's 200 degrees. I still have the default firmware on here. Uh, full disclosure, this did not work out of the box. One of the elements was broken off uh, that makes contact with the iron. Uh, I can't say that was actually defective from the manufacturer. Uh, it could have been from when I put the iron in. I may have not had it lined up right. I may have hit one, that front copper piece that goes around the ceramic part of the iron. I believe it's ceramic. And, and pulled that off. The screw's very, very small. So fortunately, I had another screw. I was able to just screw it down, reassemble, and everything worked out just fine. Uh, what I had on screen when I turned it on when uh, that copper piece was broken was it would say sensor error. So if you get a sensor error, take it apart, which is pretty simple. But two screws, three screws, pull the two pieces of the shell apart like you see in the pictures, and just inspect it. It's pretty amazing that that's really all it takes to make a soldering iron that's this intelligent and smart. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I think there's a lot of valuable information about the custom firmware over on UAV Tech's channel. I'm pretty sure everybody who does reviews has already done this. So let's move on. Uh, another one of the things that you'll probably need is a nice hex tool. This happens to be a 1.3. I pulled this one out because it's blue, or at least it's kind of a shade of blue. Maybe you might call that green. Uh, but hex tools, I like the ones where you can replace uh, the actual hex end, they just, for me, they, they feel higher quality and um, I've never replaced one, but they just feel higher quality. That's one of the things I look for. And this is my favorite LiPo checker. Where did my battery go? I had a battery set out. There we go. So this does more than just a LiPo checker, but all I use it for is LiPo checking. 
And we take our balance lead here. You can't hardly see that. Let me pull this out. This is how I keep my batteries. So black wire goes as pin one. Plug that in. Whoop. This just little two cell. Robert Thompson turned me on to this and I bought two of them. Um, uh, there's the MC6S, I think it's called, by URUAV. It does other things as well. You know, we've got USB down there. I don't even know what these other things do. Um, never tried them out. I think it does some binding for your receivers um, or signal checking, possibly. I just love it as a battery checker. This is the next thing I thought you might be interested in, especially if you travel. If you go to a location that uh, you fly at. This is kind of one of those all-in-one tools, and I use this in the side of my bench. Uh, so it's got several different heads. This happens to be one flat. It's got it nicely printed right there on the shaft of what the sizes are. Hopefully you can see that. pH 0 and 2.5. But we have other tools in here as well. So it's got this little turn dial on the back, so you rotate it to where you need to pull the tool out. It slides out. Got a couple of hex heads there. One sixteenth. And three thirty seconds, so they get quite small. That was another reason why I picked it up. Let me get that lined up so I know what I'm getting at. Uh, let's see. Went even smaller. Oh, that's another Phillips. This is like for pairing eyeglasses. I think this is a point. Oh, yeah, pH zero zero. If you can see that in there. Real tiny. Anywho, it's a handy tool. It comes with hex heads, Phillips heads. I can see it being very handy for those of you who travel. I picked one up. It's uh, Duratrax multi-tool. Uh, I can link it down in the video description, or you can just Google that uh, and pick one up from your local shop. You may you may be able to find this in your local shop. I didn't go looking in my local area. I just looked online. Now, I have been through two pairs of these, but I bring this out because I use wire snips a lot. And I don't have to use wire snips on fixed wires, so I use these little tiny guys. And really the only thing I'm looking for, I picked these up. Uh, we have a place called Harbor Freight. It's like the cheapest tools you can buy. But really when it comes to serving their purpose, like if I need a right angle grinder and I'm just doing, you know, as a dad, a project for the weekend or maybe I'm remodeling a room or, or making something, whatever, I'm probably only going to use one once. So why go spend $100, go spend $18 on one that's probably going to die, you know, after 30 hours of use, whatever. Uh, that's the same place where I pick these up. They just have these little bins are like a dollar. But do be careful, I have picked them up to where the cutting edges don't line up. So if you go to your local shop to pick one up, I'll go ahead and close them. Make sure it goes good and flat and it does line up. Otherwise, you don't get a good cut. If you cut a big wire with this, which I've done, where is that one at? Oh, I think I finally threw that away. If you cut a big wire with this, you can just break one of these ends plumb off. I've done that. I've cleaned up a little bit recently. I think I must have uh, gotten rid of it. But yeah, these... Just little wire snips. So the last thing I'm looking at is needle nose. Hopefully you have typed out what your favorite tool is or what you recommend, especially for those people who are, you know, get looking at making their first build. You're gonna need a couple of tools to make this hobby a little he uh, easier. You don't have to spend lots and lots of money. A couple of basic tools will get you by. And the Secure SQ001 has pushed down the prices of all the smart soldering irons. I think this comes in at like $43 now. This one's down around 50, and it used to be 100 bucks, or right thereabouts. Um, and the TS-80, I haven't looked recently, but I would suspect if it's this one, it's also come down in price. So thank you, Secure, for popping into the market and <laughs> suppressing all the pricing on all these smart soldering irons. But uh, these look the same, but they are not. And there's one critical reason why I wanted this set here on the left. Can't see that very well. Let me back up here just a bit. So these come to a point, and that's a traditional needle nose. It's kind of a mini needle nose. Again, this is a tool I pick up out of the dollar bins from Harbor Freight. But this one has this flat end on it. So it allows me to get in at awkward angles sometimes and get a hold of a nut. And so I can twist stuff against this a little bit more, whereas it would spin loose out of a pointed needle nose. Actually, I think this one might be a little bit rounded out. Um, and it does have, one of the other things I look for is it does have a little bit of the uh, lines for gripping a nut or whatever you're grabbing this with in there. Uh, sometimes on needle nose, yeah, like on this one, if we can see that. See how the front part has the gripping and then the back part is slick. I have seen needle nose, maybe they're called something else, 
that don't have the gripping on it. So that's something else to look out for. That's all I have for you today. Just wanted to keep you a short video. Uh, tools are pretty important. We kind of use them and we take them for granted. I'm very interested to see what you all have typed down in the comment section to see if maybe my tool collection grows. Uh, but if you are out in the market, hopefully this has helped you pick um, maybe something out of there that you thought you might want. And the links, as I said earlier, are all down in the video description. Uh, but this little battery checker might be my favorite, like, unnecessary tool. That's why I have two of them. I splurged in case one goes bad, but I've just been using the one. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.